Hello, and welcome to another episode of the VM Blog Expert Interview Series. And today we're joined by Julie Gunderson, the Senior Reliability Advocate at Gremlin. Julie, welcome. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. I'm excited to talk to you. So uh, I guess before we jump in, uh, for, for those viewers watching, maybe you can give just a quick overview about Gremlin itself. Yeah, absolutely. So Gremlin is a tool that you can use for chaos engineering. And, and when we talk about chaos engineering, Gremlin is a tool that you can use to proactively improve your reliability, right? We want to help you prevent those outages and know your systems better. And so it's a, a great tool for organizations to use in the practice of chaos engineering. And, you know, I, I understand you're relatively new to Gremlin, and then prior to joining, you were, uh, you were with PagerDuty. Uh, was, was chaos engineering a topic of interest uh, over there as well? Yeah, absolutely. And so for folks that don't know PagerDuty, PagerDuty is an incident response uh, software that you can use. And we talked about chaos engineering a lot while I was at PagerDuty. As a matter of fact, I used to give a talk called The Psychology of Chaos Engineering, um, where I talked more about the people side of chaos engineering and actually demystified a lot of those, those things that uh, people think of when they hear chaos engineering, such as like, isn't all engineering chaotic? Um, but also at PagerDuty, like they regularly practice chaos engineering in the form of failure Fridays, which are, are game days. And they're regularly scheduled times uh, to increase the reliability by purposefully injecting those failures into systems on a regular basis. And it's, it's actually a term that was coined by Jesse Robbins while he worked at Amazon. But at PagerDuty, I mean, the goal is incident response and making sure that you don't have those major outages. And when you do have those major outages, how are you handling it? How do you get alerted? How do you know that these things are happening? And so uh, a lot of the terms that, that we use at PagerDuty are the same terms we use here at, at Gremlin, you know, mean time to discovery, mean time to resolution. And chaos engineering was a really big part of that, that practice. And I guess, um, speaking of terms used, uh, you know, between monitoring, observability, incident response, chaos engineering, it's a lot to take on at once. If a company wants to improve their reliability, where should they start? You know, that's an excellent question. And there's a lot to unpack in that, right? And people oftentimes get nervous uh, about the practice of chaos engineering. And, and Bruce Wong, who's at Stitch Fix now, but was part of that chaos engineering team over at Netflix, he used to say, you know, chaos engineering is like getting ready to go to the gym, right? You can you know, buy new shoes and buy new shorts and do all these things, but eventually you just, you just got to go to the gym. You just got to do it. But kind of going back to your question, you know, it's natural for organizations to want to single thread things, to, to work on one thing at a time. But then that typically enforces the, like those unnatural choices. So if I asked you, how do you prioritize development, testing, and operations? The question that wouldn't really make sense. You can't develop software, but not test it. And well, actually you can, it's just a really, really bad idea, right? Ultimately developing software, it's, it's not useful if it's never deployed and operated. And similarly, chaos engineering, it, it's how you should be validating your monitoring and observability. In incident response, it's how you act on the alerts generated from your monitoring and observability tools. And chaos engineering helps improve your response skills. Um, to really improve reliability, organizations, they need to think holistically about all of it. And so, you know, start small. You can start with a single service or host, you know, not the whole application or fleet. And you can start in a controlled environment with a team that's ready, and then you expand. And we call this the blast radius. And some people will say that you can only practice chaos engineering in production, but that's not necessarily the case. Adopt the practice and development so that engineers are architecting for failure and then get confident in testing and development and then move on to staging and start small in staging and then expand that blast radius and then 
finally move to production and you, you start small and you re- increase. And this is similar to how development work is done, right? You're going to work iteratively like with code and you're going to move up the environments like with code. And then you can also progress your tests. So with Gremlin, there's a lot of different tests and that's actually what is covered in the certification that we're launching here soon. But there's there's resource failures and service failures, dependency failures, application failures. And so you can progress this. So start with resource failures, which are really like CPU, disk, IO, and memory exhaustion. So can your monitoring detect problems? That's a great question to start with. And then move up to service failures. So can your service restart itself without manual intervention? And then go to dependency failures. What happens when the network is bad? What happens if a dependency is unavailable? And then you can move on to application failures. So do you have observability in your applications? And then you get to this point where you have continuous chaos. So you have confidence in resilience to a particular failure mode. You want to automate it. You want to prevent that drift back into failure. And, uh, you know, I know Gremlin recently took part in the uh, KubeCon event. And it seems to me the the adoption of Kubernetes and microservices uh, makes chaos engineering even more important. Do you think that's true? And and can you maybe explain that? Oh, I absolutely agree with that statement. Reliability has become a bigger challenge as our systems have grown in complexity, right? Microservices, they're great. They allow teams to be decoupled and that improves developer velocity. But there's a trade-off and that trade-off is that increased complexity. You know, one of the most common use cases of chaos engineering, it's dependency testing so that you can see how issues or outages in one service impact other services, often in ways that aren't apparent in architecture diagrams, right? We don't have the ability now with these complex systems to hold all of that, that architecture in our head. So how do we test that? And when it comes down to it, Customers, they don't care why you're down. It's your responsibility to ensure that you have the proper redundancies in place. So I guess if I were to sum it up, uh, the rise in complexity is what really makes that case for chaos engineering. And I know you, you, you briefly touched on it. Gremlin's uh, launching a new certification program. It seems very exciting because I know a lot of people want to learn more about chaos engineering and quite frankly, how to do it safely and securely. Can you tell us a little bit more about the program itself and why you guys built it? Yeah, absolutely. And you you touched on safety. And that's one of the reasons that Gremlin is such a great tool, because there is the safety there. You have the safety to, to check your systems ahead of time to make sure they're ready for your chaos engineering experiments. There's this big red halt all button so that you can, you can stop your experiments if, let's say, that they're proving your hypothesis wrong and all your systems are crashing. So safety is important. And that's part of going through the certification process. So we actually released a certification in June, which is the Gremlin Certified Chaos Engineering Practitioner Certification. And that's the prerequisite to this new certification, which is the second step, which is the Gremlin Certified Chaos Engineering uh, Certification Professional, because we want people to be able to understand the concepts of chaos engineering. So why are we doing this? And there's a lot of things that are unfortunately named in our, uh, in our industry. And chaos engineering is one of those. So it can sound scary. And there are a lot of misconceptions that come with chaos engineering, such as we're just going to randomly turn things off and see what happens. But there's a lot more to it. This is the scientific method. You're observing your systems, forming a hypothesis, testing that hypothesis, analyzing the data. You're sharing that data. You're repeating the the experiments. And when we look at Google searches for chaos engineering between like 2016 and 2020, that grew around 2,427%. So chaos engineering is something that's on people's minds. And we want to help them, A, understand what chaos engineering is and how to practice it, 
but also to be able to prove that to their organizations. So with the certification, you actually do get a certification and a badge that you can add to your LinkedIn profiles, that you can add to your resume so that you can say, I've been proven to be an expert in these areas. And that's why the second certification, uh, the professional, is even more exciting because it also goes into some of the aspects of like the business and technical initiatives that are aligned with chaos engineering. Because one of the things that we want to make sure that people can do is explain why we want to have this practice in our organization, because it all comes back to reliability and making sure that we're building a reliable internet for everybody else out there to use, right? And so we want people to be able to go out and learn and then prove that they have this knowledge. So we're really, really excited about the launch of this. Well, Julie, this has been great. And uh, I really appreciate you joining us today and catching up the VM blog audience on all of this great information. Uh, we'll be uh, sure to, to put links so people can get to, to, to more information about the, the certification program that you guys are launching uh, in the show notes as well. Well, thank you. And thank you for having me today. Uh, really looking forward to, to watching this and to hearing what people's thoughts are as well. Great. All right. Well, thanks. We appreciate your time. Thank you. All right.